Hi, in this video we will explain how to use existing monocular depth estimation networks to generate highly detailed estimations. We will even do so without retraining these networks. We achieve our results by getting several estimations at different resolutions. We then merge those into a structurally consistent high resolution depth map. This work is a collaboration between the Computational Photography Lab at Simon Fraser University and Adobe Research. Before we get into the details, let's look at how depth estimation networks behave. Monocular depth estimation uses contextual cues such as occlusions or the relative sizes of objects to estimate the structure of the scene. We will use a pre-trained MIDAS network by Hanfl, Lessinger, and colleagues here, but our analysis with the SGR network by Sien and colleagues also supports our claims. MIDAS uses a fully convolutional architecture trained on a variety of datasets. The original MIDAS implementation resizes the biggest dimension of the input image to the training resolution while keeping the aspect ratio, then feeds the image to the network. When we instead feed the same image to the network at different resolutions, some interesting patterns arise. At lower resolutions, many details in the scene are missing, such as birds in this example. At high resolutions, however, we start to see inconsistent overall structure, and this flat board gets significantly less flat. The advantage is that the network is able to generate high-frequency details. This shows that there is a trade-off between structural consistency and high-frequency details with respect to input resolution. We explain this behavior through two properties of convolutional neural networks, limited receptive field size and network capacity. The lack of high frequency details in low resolutions are due to a limited network capacity. A small network that generates the structure of a complex scene cannot also generate fine details. The loss of structure at high resolutions comes from a limited receptive field size. The receptive field is the region around a pixel that contributes to the estimation at that pixel. It is set by the network configuration and training resolution, and gets smaller as resolution increases. At a low resolution, every pixel can see the edges of the board, so the network judges that this is a flat wall. At a high resolution, however, some pixels do not receive any contextual information. This results in large structural inconsistencies. For any given image, we determine the highest resolution that will result in a consistent structure by making sure that every pixel has contextual information. For this purpose, we need the distribution of contextual cues in the image. This is a challenging task addressed by Hu and colleagues, who point to their correlation with image edges. We thus approximate contextual cues with a simple edge map. The resolution where every pixel is at most a half receptive field size away from context edges is called R0. When we increase the resolution any further, structural inconsistencies will arise, but more details will be generated. When 20% of pixels do not receive any context, we call this resolution R20. Note that R0 and R20 depend on the image content. We are still able to go beyond R0 by merging the high frequency details in the R20 resolution onto the structure of the base resolution. We call this double estimation. We train an image-to-image -image translation network to merge the low resolution depth range of the base with the high resolution details of R20. It does so without inheriting the structural inconsistencies of the high res input. This way, we go beyond R0 and generate more details by using R20 as our high resolution input. Note that R20 is bounded by the smoothest regions in the image. Well, there are image patches that could support a higher resolution. We choose candidate patches by tiling the image and discarding all patches without useful details. The leftover patches are expanded until their edge density matches that of the image. Finally, we merge a double estimation for each patch onto our base. We do have numerical data to back our research, but we'd rather show you some great examples. In this example, the city has similar depth to the workers because of the base estimation. Our method sometimes creates noise on flat surfaces at the highest resolutions. This is visible on the man's t-shirt here. Nevertheless, our method is able to produce detailed depth maps of architecture, works in unusual environments with camera distortion, and even on art, an artist's own perspective. Here, though the art is non-realistic, spires, towers, and landscape depth are still recognized. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you learned something.